The doctrine that people will be punished for eternity is not popular, but it is the truth. And sometimes that which is not popular, when it is the truth, it does us good. And if you believe in the doctrine of hell, it will spur you to holiness. If you believe in the doctrine of hell, you will see the beauty and wonder of the gospel that Christ has died for you on the cross. If you believe in the doctrine of hell, it will spur you to love others in your evangelism more. It might not be popular, but it's true. If someone has cancer, which is best to say? Oh, you've not got cancer. It's just a cold. I can't bear the thought that you've got cancer. I can't bear the thought that you're going to suffer. Oh, you haven't got cancer, nor, says the doctor, nor, uh, you, you've got the flu, but they've got cancer. Would the doctor really be a doctor if the doctor just said you've got the flu when they knew that that person had cancer? But what if the doctor, who another doctor who's honest, sees their patient has cancer and says, you've got cancer. We've got to cut it out. That doctor cares. And because he's pointed the, the problem, he can deal with the problem. But if, that doc, if another doctor says, no, you've got the flu, yeah. That person, their patient's got cancer, but they say, no, 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 you've not got cancer. You, 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 you've just got flu, don't worry about it. That doctor is evil, because that doctor is now making that person unaware of the great suffering that it, they're going to experience, and is not providing the real cure. And these annihilationists are telling you, you ain't got cancer, you got the flu. And you're believing it. But a real preacher says, no, you got cancer. And you need to be operated on. And, the, and sin. You got, you're a sinner and you're a hell-deserving sinner. And the operation is that Christ has died for you and you need to be saved by grace. Otherwise, you're going to be lost forever. That's a true doctor. That's a true preacher. True preachers have never been loved. True preachers have never been admired. True preachers live for the fear of God, not for the fear of men. But annihilationists, they're men pleasers. They want to please men. They want to tickle people's ears. No matter how much orthodox they come across, that's what they're doing. It tick they're pandering to itching ears. And they might try to convince you that they're orthodox, that they're trying to be biblical, but in reality, they are just pandering to the masses and telling people what they want to hear and telling you what you want to hear but sometimes it's not what you want to hear that you need to hear it's what you need to hear that you need to hear if I had cancer I might want to be told that I've not got cancer but if I've got cancer I need to be told I've got cancer so that they can operate on me alright we, we are told some things that we don't like to be told but when we're told it, if it's the truth, it will only do us good. To know the truth will only do us good. But to spin a lie and tell people there is no hell, that is a pit for, that is a that is a, a devilish doctrine, a demonic doctrine, and it blinds people from the truth. The truth is people are hell deserving sinners and they have a saviour who saved them from hell. That's the truth. And I've gone on about this quite a bit, and we've come to the end now. But I believe that God has wanted me to do this series, and because I think there must be a big need at the moment, and I really think there is. I've been looking at what the Orthodox are evangelical Bible teachers like uh, Al Martin and. Um, if you go to Al Martin, you go to uh, R.C. Sproul, there are many great teachers and some of them have done lectures and talks on hell but the annihilationists are, are pumping so much material out there that they're flooding the market with their heresy. So I believe that God has made me 
got me to do this series and got me to do this video because so much has flooded the market that the, there has to be a counter and I think maybe this is a part of the counter part of the helping people to see that there's danger in this teaching and, and get people to pull up a bit and, and to, to realize the danger that they're getting themselves into so I hope that's been a help and I've done it from the sincerest of motives and I, I, I try to teach and, and preach what is right and I hope that it's been a blessing to you so I'm going to finish now and uh, let's finish and so thank you for listening Lord we pray for those who have gone down this path and I just pray that you would open their eyes and help them to see the truth and I pray also for your people that they would not be taken in by false teachers and false doctrine but Father they would stand upon your word and stand upon truth and not be taken in by their emotion not be taken in by clever smart debaters and scholars but Lord they would allow the Holy Spirit to teach them through the pure word of God and that they would be humble enough to submit to your word and I pray for your people that you would keep them strong in you Lord in Jesus name Amen Amen thank you for listening and God bless you and so those are some reasons why I'm not an annihilationist after many many hours of studying them five full days reading PhDs reading lectures reading listening to their lectures and debates I stand with um, David Platt I stand with R.C. Sproul I stand with John MacArthur I stand with Al Muller I stand with these men and I believe in the doctrine of eternal punishment and I abhor and regard annihilationism is a doctrine of demons. God bless you.